Hey, in today's video, we're gonna create this motion graphics in After Effects. So let's get started. Let's create a new composition. Rename this to main comp. Hit OK. And I'm gonna drag in the background image, which is this, and make this a 3D layer. Create a new camera. Hit OK. And I'm gonna go and create a null object, which is going to be the controller of the camera. So select the camera, pick whip 2D null object, okay? Select the text tool, click here and type in your text. I'm gonna use this jungle safari and align it to the center and I'm using this tanker font. Pre-compose this text layer, control shift and C and rename this title, hit okay. And I'm gonna go inside this title and go to the fix and presets and type in gradient and drop this four color gradient on top of that text layer. And I'm gonna change these points to somewhere here, closer to the text. I'm gonna change this to white and white and to a darker white, gray, so to say. Okay, so I'm gonna leave that for now and close this and go to the main composition and make this a 3D layer as well. So go and select the null, hit P on the keyboard and, and make sure to make this null a 3D layer because we're gonna move the camera in 3D space, okay? So I'm gonna move this position of the null away so that the background is far away and I'm gonna select this background layer, I'll um, rename this BG for background and hit P on the keyboard and position it away from the text. Something like this and I'm gonna scale it back up to fit the composition, something like this and move it somewhere here, all right? So go to the effects and presets and type in tint and drag and drop it on the background image and then tint 50% because that was too saturated that is looking much better okay so let's go and animate the camera first so hit p selecting only an object set a keyframe and move maybe around five seconds we can fine tune it anytime we want so i'm gonna start with five seconds and i'm gonna push in the towards the text so the frame will be somewhere around this. Okay, so if I play it back, I think we're gonna move this keyframe maybe around three seconds or go to the first frame or maybe I'm gonna push the camera even further away so that we have some more depth and I'm gonna adjust the background, size of the background. Something like this. And if I play it back, okay. So select all the keyframes, F9 for easy ease, go to the graph. And if you don't have a graph like this, click on this and make sure you edit. You check this edit speed graph and you'll have the same graph like what I have here. So select here and tweak the graph, something like this. And if I play it back, okay, that's really nice. And maybe I'm gonna tweak the graph to something like this. Okay, that's looking great. So go back to the normal timeline view. So once you have that, let's go to the project panel and I have some assets here and I'm gonna select this this one which i downloaded from png wing drag and drop it on top of that and i'll go and add a tint and maybe i'm gonna pick a color which is green and i'm gonna try to match the color as close as possible right so you don't have to be too precise for this so you it blends a little bit better than what the original image was. And make sure you make this a 3D layer as well because we are working with 
3D layers, a 3D camera, I mean. Okay, so hit P on the keyboard and move it towards the camera. If you hold down Shift and scrub through this number, you'll move it more faster or else it will be slow. Okay, so that's a little tip here. And I'm gonna move it somewhere here and Control D to duplicate and move that duplicate layer even more closer to the camera. And I'm gonna select the previous layer, go to the effects and presets and type in curves and drag and drop the curves on top of that layer and I'll make it darker so that you have some depth, you know. If you don't add that curves, you see it's flat and it's boring. So to, to simulate some depth, I added some shadows to the, to the layer, okay? So you have some depth like this and let's see, I'm gonna move this even more away or maybe scale it up a little bit like this and duplicate this again and move it somewhere here. Maybe scale it, move it towards the camera something like this and maybe add some curves so that you have some darker shadows here okay so I'm gonna select this layer control D to duplicate again and move it away somewhere here and I'll shadow off the curves here to have some variation you can see there you have some parallaxing going on control D to duplicate it again and move it away move it here and maybe turn on the curves and adjust the curves to have some depth you can see there some depth going on okay so you have to duplicate it like this and move on you know towards the text maybe skate it up and turn off the curves and maybe here or you can even rotate it to something like this or away towards the text and maybe scale it up to add some variation to the uh, leaves all right so it solely depends on you so i'm gonna move it somewhere here you can see there Control G to duplicate it again and rotate it and maybe even towards the text here, scale it down and maybe duplicate it another time. Maybe turn off the curves here, scale it up to add some variation. Okay. Maybe this one should go towards the camera. I mean the text. Okay. Control D to duplicate it. Move it way here. Maybe turn off the curves here. So you can go come here again and control D to duplicate it. So I'm gonna fill all the gaps here. So here and maybe add some that's too dark maybe that's better all right so that's looking great great all right so go and grab which one is that yes control D to duplicate it and move it this left and towards the text, maybe push it down, scale it up, maybe rotate it like this, and maybe even scale it even more towards the text. And if I fly the camera on that, maybe somewhere here, or just the, adjust the curves something like that and all right uh, let's drag in another asset 
go to the project panel and I have a, a wood, which is this. I'm gonna drag and drop it. And I'm gonna solo this for now and click this pen tool and I'm gonna zoom in and you know, cut off this because we don't need this. Hit M to bring up the mask and subtract that. And we're left with only the the lock, the wood, okay? So if you turn off that, you need some color correction. First things first, let's go and color correct it using curves and maybe tint. Tint, it's simple as that. Tint that and maybe desaturate it a little bit and add some curves so that this wood matches with this. It blends much better like that. Okay, so we don't have to be super precise on this. It's very simple. Okay, let's leave that for now and let's make this a 3D layer and rename this maybe three. All right, or you can even, you know, change the color to red or whatever you want. Okay, so let's move on and reposition this uh, tree, P. Maybe just somewhere here. All right, that is uh, nice like this. And if I go and select this title, maybe I'm gonna push it towards the camera, hit P on the keyboard and move it towards the camera. Somewhere here and go to the tree and bring the tree even closer to the camera like this, okay? So you have some parallaxing. So the more parallaxing effect you have, the more realistic you're gonna achieve for this. The, the more realistic you're gonna you're gonna get. Okay. So just move it towards the camera. So select this title and move it up somewhere here. So you're gonna fill all the all the gaps here with these bushes, okay? So we're gonna do that right away. All right, so we're gonna duplicate a bunch of this image. So I'm gonna select this, Control D to duplicate it, and move it up like this, and hit P to bring up the position, and move it towards the camera. You know, if I scrub the time indicator, I'm gonna move it towards towards the text, okay? Somewhere here, if I come back. So it's gonna render really, really slow now because you have so many layers on top of each other. So it's gonna render slow, okay? Something like that. Let's collapse all this and I'm gonna get another image, which is slightly different from the previous one, which is uh, this one. I'm gonna drag and drop this on top of this tree, make this a 3D layer. I'm gonna go to one of these, and I'm gonna copy this tint and curves, Control C, and go back to this layer and Control V to paste it, and P, move it towards the camera so that it's just on top of this tree and move it here and maybe even rotate it something like this and control d duplicate it move it away scale it up and you can always have some variation by adding some rotation to that and select the lower layer and turn on the curves so that you have some depth here, okay? So we have this and I think I need to duplicate a bunch of other, other layers. Control D to duplicate it, move it towards the, maybe on top of the tree. That's at the back side. All right, somewhere here. Move it 
up just on top of that tree to hide that sharp edge okay that's really nice I'm gonna duplicate it another time control D and maybe even you know rotate it like this and move it to the right side somewhere here and you duplicate it again and move it to the center or scale it down and rotate it like this and you got the idea guys it's very straightforward very simple and I also added some other you know images here you can always add this other leaves here control V to paste that and make it a 3d layer as well and hit P to bring up the position and move it towards the camera and maybe even scale it down move it to the side somewhere here maybe even rotate it and you can also have it like this so that's how it is and i'm gonna select this text to title and move it a little bit here because it's visible so you have the visibility there and the other thing i added here was add some modify the animation of the the camera so hit u on the keyboard and hit Control and R to bring up the rotation and I set a rotation here set a keyframe for the rotation and I'm gonna change the position to somewhere it starts from the you know bottom somewhere here okay and it comes up like this so you're gonna adjust this I'm gonna find that Maybe this one, maybe move it to the right side and the other one which is this. So this is the layer and I hit P, I'm gonna move the X somewhere here, maybe even scale it down a little bit and move it here and if I move the camera, yes that's very nice, so it goes there. And let's go to the null object again and add some rotation. And I'm gonna add this rotation, okay? So two, or maybe negative two. And maybe change the position here. So it comes here, right about here. something like this and set this back to zero select all the keyframes F9 so if you play it back so you have some rotation like that that's very nice and the other thing I also added was Hold down Alt and click on this position and type in an expression. Wiggle 2, comma, 5, maybe 10. 5 and 10. Let's see what we have. That's very intense. Maybe I'm going to stick 1. Alright, that way it's not static. So you have a moving camera like that. Alright. And I also added a uh, stock footage, which is uh, particles. Let's see. Let's drag and drop it here. Make this a 3D layer. And hit P on the keyboard to bring up the position. Move it towards the camera. Somewhere. Somewhere around 
this would be fine to change this to screen so you have a little bit of particles there passing and there i'm gonna add another copy control d to duplicate it hit p to bring up the position and move it towards towards the towards the text okay and you can add some variation so make this frame and if you play it back so you have some particles going on there and I added a smoke as well so drag and drop this smoke and maybe add this to a 3d layer like this and rotate it like this and hit P to bring up the position and bring it closer to the camera something like this and maybe even skate it down a little bit and change this to screen as well okay so if you see here so you have uh, a hard edge here as you can see here so i'll just show you how to fix that okay so let's uh, select this smoke layer which is this and go here hit t on the keyboard to bring up the opacity set an opacity of 100 here go back somewhere here and set this to zero select this keyframes f9 or maybe somewhere here like this and if you play it back you have a smoke like that and i also added a bat flying bat so let me just solo this and see what we have here so this is the flying bat so add this just trim that and trim that and make this a you know 3d layer four 3d layer and let's see where we can add that okay somewhere here as you can see it's way far away let me bring it towards the camera maybe i want the bat to fly past somewhere here as you can see here maybe bring it closer to the camera and maybe even scale it down it's gonna be really slow now because you have a bunch of layers on top of each other so it's gonna take a while to render so that is very very nice i think that's a little bit too late for the bat to come maybe i want it to be somewhere here okay so let's see So, as you can see, you have to scale this up here and yes, the bat, really nice. So I added a wiggle, the camera shake when the bat passes the camera. So it's going to start from here. So let's go to the camera. The camera hit p to bring up the position set a keyframe and somewhere here between this between these two keyframes i'm gonna add a wiggle expression select both the keyframes and go to where you wiggle where is it yes this is wiggle selecting both these keyframes and set the frequency to 30 and magnitude to 15 and apply that and if you play it back see some camera camera shake here so that introduced some energy in the composition so I kind of like that okay so lastly don't forget to turn on the motion blur for all the layers because motion blur is going to make uh, this composition a lot more realistic and 
there you have the motion blur turned on for each and every layers that I have here and for the composition as well so if you play it back now you're gonna get like this so I hope you learned something from this tutorial if you haven't subscribed to the channel consider subscribing this is motion designer thanks a lot for watching and I will see you in my next video take care